Oh, thank you, sister. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, now we have reached the time for practical talk session. And first, let me read out the holy word of God, taken out from First John. First John chapter four, verses twenty and twenty-one. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Uh, this evening uh, for our practical talks as and we have uh, brother Mark as a resource person. Uh, I hope that we already know him that uh, this morning he already took the doctrinal session. And um, before I call him, uh, let me introduce uh, a little bit about him. Mm. Sister or brother, am I audible like this? Yes, sister. Okay. Uh, they just sent me his bio data, so I will just read out like this. Uh, uh, his full name is Mark V. Vanarema and nickname Brother Mark. His address is Ben Hui Aizol, relationship married, and his occupation is teacher and involved in ESI ministry since 2004. Um, his, designation in, uh, his designation is president, secretary. His favorite Bible verse is Ephesians chapter two, verse eight. His uh, favorite gospel song is How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sound by John Newton. Uh, favorite evangelist. David Wilkerson, and his favorite book is Knowing God by J.I. Pecker, and his hobby is playing guitar and reading. Favorite quotation from any person, life is short, eternity is long, live like it by John Piper, uh, and his motto is, the sovereignty of God is the pillow upon which the child of God rests his head at night, giving perfect peace by uh, Charles Bergen. And uh, now we will hand over our time to Brother Mark. And we are very thankful and fortunate that uh, we are having Brother Mark as a resource person. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sister, for the warm introduction once again. Great to see you all. I'm so thrilled to seeing all of you. I think we are 26 year in number, and I don't know how many of you are campers, but I believe there are also non-campers, camp officials. We're working so tirelessly. It's great to see you all. So before we start, I wanna check the system again. Uh, is my microphone loud and clear? Can you hear me properly? Is there in Zoli? Is this working? I'm having to use my Google device here. Is it working, Brother Josh? Yes, brother. All right, very good. I like the deep, sonorous sound of Brother Josh. He has a great voice, wonderful bass uh, singer, I suppose. So today, uh, <clears throat> we're going to learn something about relationship and or even relationships. First of all, I want to thank uh, you, camp officials, core team committee and uh, for inviting me. And uh, yesterday was actually the, the, according to the schedule, but because of my emergency work, I'm working under state government. So there are so many emergencies that I have to attend. And so I wasn't able to take the class, but brother Philip was there to and he kind of replace our timing session and I'm very happy I want to thank brother Philip also for taking and covering me up yesterday now 
I believe that most of you are uh, SLTC campers, right? So if possible, I just want to make sure that, uh, I, mean, I just want to know how many of you are, have already attended camp one way or another. So can you just raise your hand or give thumbs up or some kind of emoji that you attended camp? Yes. How many of you? One, two, three, four, five. Only five of you, right? Yes, please raise your hand if you have attended any camp like discipleship, uh, SLTC or EU camp. Mm. All right, very few. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you very much. You can put your hand and your fingers down or your palms down. You see, at UESI, uh, we are very sort of conservative in our handling of the issue of relationship. Relationship is the probably the number one. It's probably the number one um, factor uh, that uh, really number one factor that really helped, I mean, that really helped in the spiritual decline of students, right? And if you had ever been in our camp, uh, UBSI, you know that we are very conservative in our approach. And we do not take it very lightly, okay? So that's uh, something of a, a sad news for many of you, perhaps, something of a sad news. We do not take it very lightly because we feel that in our handling of a relationship, something is terribly wrong and we are not mature enough. Students, EUs are not mature enough to handle this huge and very deadly, lethal and even very seductive environment this this mammoth this gigantic huge uh, temptation called relationship and therefore the way we teach how we teach our trajectory is to teach young students like you EUs like you to totally abstain from getting involved into relationship all right. So does that put you off to some of you? <laughs> yes. All right. How is my voice now? Is it loud? Brother Josh, is it clear now? Or? Brother, if you can uh, put it up a little bit, it would be great. Oh, all right. I'm trying to turn up the volume. It says you're 100%. And uh, wait, just a let me see. Oh. It's not audible now, brother. Brother, it's not audible yet. Is that better? Yes, brother. Crystal clear. All right. I sound like a pro now, right? Looks like uh, there was some kind of a uh, little bit of problem here. I need to tweak this technology every once in a while. So. Let's go back to what I started at UESI. The way we teach young students like you, you, you is that the bottom line is you got to abstain yourself from getting into this intoxication called relationships. Does that hurt? <laughs> 
Some of you might be really put off, I believe. Oh, what have I signed up myself into? I thought they're going to teach me how to have a great, a good girlfriend and how to handle this situation while I still serve the Lord at UESI and the UU. But that's not how we teach because we believe we teach biblically. And so uh, we have to abstain ourselves. That's the bottom line. And we're going to talk why. Why do you have to be so careful about relationships? All right. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And I know some of you have had uh, relationships in the past or even up till this point, And some of you have, your hearts might have been broken. I don't know, Brother Tansanga, how many times your hearts are broken. And Sister Rebecca, how many crushes you have had on certain young boy. I don't know, Sister L.K. Esther. I will take a look at how the Bible teaches us while we're young. All right. Let's try to pull some principles. And some of you already know the content of what we are going to talk about today. It's very, very, very important at this point to understand how to handle relationship. When we say the word relationship, all right, or relationships, some stages we are really talking about this kind of relationship all right look at this beautiful picture husband and a wife they are into relationships all right we're talking about this thing all right I want you to focus on the picture for a while I believe someone is calling right here I'll be right back okay You wanted to have a very good relationship and especially when you look at your future if I ask you how much of you wanted a bad husband or a bad wife I don't think nobody would say yeah I want a difficult woman to handle you don't want to do that right and so when we say relationship First thing that comes to our mind should be how God governed, how God wants us to handle this relationship. All right. So everything that we are doing should be under the principles of the Bible, under the guidance of the Bible. You cannot just say, well, it comes out instinctively and I cannot stop it. Well, the adrenaline rush is so strong. I just can't uh, hold it back can't fight it's I, i'm a human being it's my nature to enjoy and to revel in you can't say that because you are a christian right and therefore you have to take relationships so seriously in order to have a great relationship or to enjoy a husband a couple life a christian couple life you gotta start from this time all right from this time on very important so the question now comes is dating biblical dating or having relationships biblical can you answer how many of you think dating is okay right now for students well i can date i can have many girlfriends i can throw away and it's like uh, you know i need to buy a shirt oh come on I need to wear the shirt, look around, and if I don't, I have to 
toss this aside and I have to look for other shirts, right? You want to buy a motorcycle, you're going to the store. So many motorcycles, you have to try it out, right? How many of you think dating is biblical? Yeah? Anybody want to say this? Dating. Having a lot of girlfriends or boyfriends or, you know, that relationship. Is this well, boy? Do you think dating is biblical? Uh, I don't really think so, brother. All right, brother Lutea. I see. I see means in charge. I think, brother Empty Lutea. Do you think dating is biblical? Uh, brother, I, it depends on the persons. It depends on the person. All right, wonderful, sister. BSC uh, Sister BSC is apparently think out a signal Sister Nutei LK Nutei O3 LK Sister Nutei Not really brother All right Not really KLL Rim Rimoya brother Rim Rimoya do you think dating is biblical no brother right thank you then vasti mk vasti no brother okay very good now let me ask you another question how many of you received proposals <laughs> let's say first just a rindiki how many boys have approached you and how many have you turned down Yes. No one. No one. All right. You have been so protective. Sister Ngaisaki, Ralte. No. Yes, Sister Ngaisaki. No. Uh, mm, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You lost count, right? Yes. See, the whole thing is dating. We don't see dating in the Bible or courtship, all right? That's so much. First of all, we don't see that happening. We see marriages and we see that these marriages, God ordained marriages in the Bible. We don't see people squandering around their lives, having relationships here and there. And now of, of course, we saw some people, some characters like Samson, but uh, you know what happened to Samson, right? This is regardless of how God wanted him to live. He lived his life uh, li uh, licentiously that brought to his downfall and the downfall of the Israelite tribes uh, uh, as a whole. Now, many people are into dating. This very subject of uh, relationship is something that is very very unpopular now and the reason is of course because of hollywood and also our culture popular culture and also because of the miso culture where we have nula rim all that thing and you know you know the drill right how they did everything and of course in modern day so if we preach now if we say now to you and uh, what like what we're doing and then uh, and the People here of that they will say, "Oh, you are ultra conservative. You, what you guys are doing is totally wrong. You're trying to inhibit them, and then psychologically also that is so going to be wrong." That's how they would say. But we insist that it is biblical for students while you are in your student days to refrain from getting involved in relationships because this we believe is so toxic from our own experiences and from the experiences of others when we look around we saw that this is really dangerous for their spiritual life and so the best way is to abstain yourself from relationships right and not be influenced by hollywood and culture around us and also by our miso traditional lifestyle you see the bible we have to have our basis on the bible right let's take a look at timothy second timothy 2 22 all right what does it say second timothy 2 22 right 
This is always a, a very important uh, biblical passage to take a look at this and to read it very clearly, right? See this? What does it say? Now flee from youthful lust, right? Flee from youthful lust and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Flee from youthful lust, right? You guys are in your youth, right? These days, you're not your 40s or 30s like me, not even 50s. You have to flee from the lust. Lust, of course, it encompasses so many things. Not only this sexual lust, but there are so many. But when you read this, you know exactly, right? Lust. Hot-blooded young, young people got to flee from youthful lust and pursue righteousness instead. The Bible is so clear, right? Can you give me some example? Somebody who flee, like who flee, who fled, literally. Can you give some Joseph. example? Yes, Joseph. Joseph. Very good. Joseph fled from that lust. That situation, very dangerous, very toxic, right? That beautiful woman, Potiphar's wife, very sexy woman, all right, if we use that term. Let's try to seduce him. And if he stayed in that room any longer, I believe Joseph would have lied down with her. They would have had, you know, very egregious outcome. But he fled. And here the same thing. Flee from youthful lust, the Bible says. Why he says, because you guys are not mature enough to handle it right now. You guys are not old enough to handle it. Because what does it entail when you have a boyfriend or girlfriend relationship? It's like, uh, you know, you just want to enjoy the, the sex, right? You just want to enjoy the partnership, all right? And you want to act like you're uh, in charge, but you're really not in charge, right? As long as your parents paid, I would say, you cannot afford this, right? Most of you are parents paid. You can't do that. This is dangerous. And what it entails when you have boyfriend or girlfriend, you want to get on a lonely sidewalk or someplace and ultimately you will fall, right? And girls, when you lost your virginity, what would happen to you, right? Think about the long-term effect. And boys, the consciousness that is living inside of you, it will go on and on, right? The guilty feeling, that's not good. So flee from youthful lust. You are not in charge yet, fully in charge. You're not fully mature. You don't earn yet. You, 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 you're just growing up right now. So treat them like boys and girls, like brothers and sisters. That's what you have to do. Right. You don't want to destroy your life or others' life. And you don't want to live the rest of your life in regret or self-pity, condemning yourself. Right. It will have repercussions. I'll tell you a story of a young girl from one college. Many years ago, we were having a kind of a prayer meeting there. He, she stood up and sobbing and crying. And she said, oh, I've just broken up with my boyfriend. And she said, I'll tell you what boys are like these days. She said, said every time we have boyfriends, these boyfriends, they'd always try to slip with us. And it's so hard for me to defend myself against his advances. And so finally, I feel that I can't take it any longer. So I just, even though I love him, but he always wanted to have sex with me. And I just can't uh, really control myself, myself also anymore. So I, I just felt that I had a breakup with him. So I broke up with him, even though I loved him. But I felt that this is going to destroy my life and she was crying and sobbing and we prayed for that lady see that that happened a couple of years ago but now what would have been the the mentality of boys by now it would be a lot more sinister than that right that young girl she i'm very happy for her that she got out of that relationship and i remember one girl she said 
she's wearing something here. Uh, yeah, uh, on her neck, and she said, "It showed me so this is my purity ring. As long as I wear this, and it's gonna help me to remain pure. I'm not gonna engage in sexual activity or anything of that sort." And she's fending off, and she uh, broke away with her childhood. Uh, I mean, mm, boyfriend also. She said, "I want to remain pure until the right time comes." I'm. I really applaud her for that kind of commitment. And I remember my many years ago, I was uh, uh, riffling through the files in the books of my dad many, many years ago when I was a small boy. And I, I saw in one of his journals, he wrote the teachings about relationships, boyfriends and girlfriends. He said, young boys and girls are not to be engaged in his own activity. They should marry only the love of their life and they should not squander their lives in this and they are to be taught correctly that's what he says and so for young boys and girls there should not be any boyfriend or girlfriend he didn't teach me he didn't say that but i saw it in his journal i wrote uh, i read it i still remember that day and it's in my heart ever since i try to live by that my father's um command or my father's wish with regard to this and i'm very very happy that somehow that has saved a lot of my potential troubles right okay we saw in the bible that joseph fled now the bible verses in first corinthians 6 18 20 flee from sexual immorality right so i think i'll share the screen here Yes. Can you see this? Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin person commits is outside the body, but the sexual immoral person sins against his own body. How do you know that your body, or do you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have come from God? You are not your own. You are your body with a price. So glorify God in your body. Wow, this is... A, a verse that is packed with so much we can unpack it it's huge glorify god in your body flee from sexual immorality right you your body is a temple of the holy spirit oh my this is a huge huge saying right for those who are redeemed regenerated this morning we talk about redemption uh, uh the holy spirit right and work a holy spirit those of us who are redeemed our body is a temple of the holy spirit take a look at your hands your palm everything you may look you may look very funny you may be pot bellied or whatever according to the world you may not have six pack okay brother tansanga but take a look at your body is a temple of the holy spirit right so the bible commands is glorify god in your body so if you give your body away to your girlfriend or your boyfriend and enjoy and cuddling and having sex and enjoying going after and then thinking about them is that glorifying god brother josh would that be part of glorifying god no brother let me glorify god okay how am i gonna glorify god i'm gonna give my body the bible says you know that the body is a temple of the holy spirit i'm gonna glorify god by giving my life my body away to that girl or to that boy or another boys or girls or 10 boys 10 girls along the way is that a part of glorification of god i don't think so that is destroying right destroying your body your own soul and it's so dangerous right Yes or no? You have a choice, right? You have a choice. The Bible says you got to do this. Glorify God in your body by keeping it pure. In, in Romans 12, to what does it say? 1 and 2, right? Do not conform, right? Yeah. Dear brethren, do not conform to the standards of this world, right? Give everything you have, right? For the glory of God, right? That's exactly what it is here. You have to glorify God. And the way you don't glorify God is 
giving yourself over to lust, to sexual thoughts, sex and boyfriend, girlfriend, all these are related. You can lump them in one basket. These are same thing. But those who are away from it, they, are, they have happy life. I always remember, even during our EU days and later when I look at the life of you, those whoever who gets into relationship, they always have trouble life. Their ministry doesn't flourish. They just can't do that. And they always have trouble, courting trouble after trouble, and they don't show testimony. Right, Brother Benny? If you want to show the true living testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ right now in your campuses, get away from those relationships, romantic relationships, so-called romantic relationships. Those are all fake. Those are not even real love. These are infatuations, infatuations. I can vouch for that, right? These are not going to be your, 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 your spouses, your wife or your husband. So don't, just abstain from it, right? Temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes, there is another way that we can, we, we can describe that your body is a temple by, yes, intoxication of all sorts, just by taking care of a real body, physical body, right? There's another way to look at it, but uh, we don't have time for that aspect. And so, Corinthians chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians is so clear now, again, 1 Corinthians is now concerning the things about which you wrote it is good for a man not to touch a woman, but because of immoralities, each man is to have his own wife and each woman is to have her own husband, right? So we are going to have husband and we're going to have a wife. And so it's not good to have multiple partners and try it out. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, as according to that Bible verse. And so we don't try it out like secondhand car shop, right? We don't try out. Okay, let me try out this girl. If she's good, I'll, we'll have it. We can forge a former relationship. No, we can't do that. We don't play with human emotions, right? We don't play with, in fact, fire. So many people think it's just recreation. Everyone is doing it. I remember trying to convince two girls from, I think, one African country in a camp in Shillong many years ago. These girls were not convinced. They said, oh, all our friends in the campus are having, they're keeping their boyfriend and girlfriend. They're enjoying. Why, as Christians, how, why should we be left alone? We feel like we're so left alone when we walk through the, the campus area. Then, I, then we told her, oh, what God said, you just got to do it, right? It's always the way of the cross. Everyone's doing it. Just because everyone is doing it doesn't mean that you have to do it, right? Just because all the world is doing it means doesn't mean you have to do it, right? Walk the narrow road. Christ was very unpopular. So many were against him. And there were very few, right? Very few who followed. But they were strong. So, yeah, time is gone so quickly. I don't even know. Yeah, I always say this, and some of you have seen this picture already, but I just want to show you this beautiful picture. Look at this beautiful picture right wow this is a beautiful picture of a husband and a wife marriage ring what does it symbolize i often ask this it symbolizes what marriage ring what does it symbolize as a commitment it's a purity it's longevity right a couple of things can be rolled up in one marriage ring so we're, we're, we're wearing one here. If you want a sustainable marriage, if you want good marriage, if you want a Christ-centered marriage, yeah, you got to start from now. If I ask you right now, how many of you wanted to create a very good, loving, a Christ-centered family? I say, I think a brother MC, PLMC, hate him. He would be here like that. I want. You don't want to be in a household where Christ's name is not mentioned, right? Where people don't pray, right? You want to be in a household where husbands and wives, the kids, 
everybody loves Jesus. You have prayers, right? In these very dark times where families are disintegrating. And therefore, you got to start from now. See, if you, like I always say this, I don't know why I br bring up beautiful picture of my wife and me all the time, but kindly bear with me. I just want to use this as an example, right? Look at this. This is my wedding day. How beautiful they are, right? See, I want to offer my purest love to my wife, right? On this day when I, you know, make the vow, I don't want to s the guilty feeling inside of me that I have had 10 girlfriends before or 15 girlfriends before and now I'm giving my wife the remaining. That's not what I want. Same case goes with my wife. She wants to give me. She has to give me 100%, right? Because if I had had, uh, um, let's say, 20 girlfriends before, wasted my life, sowed my wild oats, what's the remaining? 100 minus 20, how much? 100 minus 20? 80. 80. So I'm giving 80% of my love. To my, and I don't want that, right? It has to be pure. It has to be 100% perfect. Same case goes with. I don't want to give the remaining. I want to give full force of my love and devotion to my wife. So that I don't have any guilty feeling. Even when we argue, when we fall out also, there has to be no way in which we can bring out those past experiences and disasters in relationship because it hurts a lot and therefore i want you to be like me to do like that i try to follow and along the way there are dangerous roads i confess sometimes i almost fell along the way but all through those times i always want to make sure that i cannot be in a relationship unless it's going to be for my wife and the lord help me. i always prayed lord would help me right now let's move on so now you may be thinking oh whoa brother mark we're only talking about relationship we don't want to talk about marriage that's uh, still a long way off and all these are not really connected we're just talking about relationship right now we're college come on you know you don't talk sound so big and family planning and all that we don't want to hear that we just want you may say that but the thing is yes everything is related because it starts from now if you go down that road right now and eventually it's going to caught up on you and you're not strong enough i'm not strong enough right and i'll tell you even billy graham is not strong enough he stayed alone the girl with a woman in a room not strong no one's strong enough. so we had to flee and we got to disengage from it as of now so now the time comes uh, i mean the question comes when is the right time for us when is the right time for us to a boyfriend or a girlfriend or to get engaged in a relationship or to be in a courtship right so as i always say some of you have heard this you know, the Bible says Ecclesiastes and Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time for everything. So the first time is for you. I want you to take a look at this. This is very, very serious for those of you who knew this also. I want you to take a look at it again, right? The first is when you are physically mature, right? When is the right time for getting into relationship? First is when you are physically mature, chronologically mature, when you are able to take, when you can be accountable for your actions and when you are ready, right? Physically, this body as well, and even mentally also, it even in, encompasses a mental capacity to handle things and challenges. Right now, you're not equipped to do all this, still too young, right? How many of you think you are so mature now that you know everything? I don't think none can say that because you all, as I said, parents paid. You are taken care of by somebody else. You're still learning and you're not physically mature. 
Next, when you are financially mature, it means when you are viable economically, when you are able to sustain yourself or when you have the means and uh, the, the livelihood uh, to, to take care of yourself, even for girls also, when you are financially stable, I mean, when you are in a position to earn, when you are in a position to help and to contribute to the family treasury, that's the right time. And most important is this, when you are spiritual and mature. Right now, you're not spiritual and mature. Most of you are not mature. You're still learning. And then by this time, we're not mature, right? For young people like you, Christians, followers of Christ, you're say, how can a blind lead the blind, right? Spiritually blind you are, not so mature, you don't even pray, no quiet time, nothing. And then to take up a wife and to start a family, oh, it's going to be a huge disaster, right? You don't want that. What you are supposed to be, you see, men are supposed to handle the families. Men are the head of the family. You need to lead spiritually also. If you can't do that, right, you're not going to have a sweet marriage also. I want you to think about these things. When you're physically mature, financially mature, and spiritually mature, those are the times when you can form an alliance, courtship, and start getting married, right? But now, so what do I do? The question now comes, what do I do now? I cannot look, yes, I am looking forward to that time. But right now, what do I need to do? I'm 18 years old. I'm only 21 years old, 20, uh, 17, and so. I'll tell her what you do. You guys start praying from now, all right? You have to pray that God would, in his own time, in his own dispensation, lead you to the right woman. So you start praying from now. Every day you pray. See, Brother Philip always says very nicely. I can't say more emphatically than he always does. See, the woman of your life, the husband, the man of your life is going to be the most important, precious possession you'll ever have. And start praying from the, for them from now on. You don't know them. You don't look for them intentionally right now, of course. But pray that God will protect them. God will keep them. And also pray that God will protect you and keep you safe and sound and healthy and alert and physically mature, uh, uh, healthily, bodily, spiritually for the right woman when you meet, when God leads you. All right. I was never giving up on God. I often prayed. Uh, many For many years, I've been praying for the right woman of my life. And along the way, there are candidates <laughs> that came, but I knew they were not the ones. So I always try to, you know, run away. Distance. That's not for that. I don't want to destroy them. I don't want to hurt them, nor me. You know, I don't want to have that guilty feeling. And so, at the right time, God gave me the woman for my wife. And I'm very happy that I prayed those prayers for many years. And many people said, oh, Brother Mark, uh, you're never this. We never saw that you were dating or anything, but you're the least per I mean, you're the person who would at least be interested in all this. And I said, oh, no, I prayed. And that's all that matters, right? You got to pray yourself also. And... Believe it or not, God's going to lead you to that man, woman of your choice. The best, I mean, you pray for that specific characteristics in that person, but God will give you the better one. I prayed, right? Sometimes I almost gave up on God and said, Lord, uh, you see, your, your prophet Hosea, you asked her to marry that prostitute. If it be for your glory, yes, I'm ready to marry even a prostitute. Give me a prostitute. I will not complain. Uh, I prayed those kinds of prayers to myself. It would be for your glory. But of course, he didn't give me a prostitute. He gave me the best candidate who can help me, who can support. And that's, uh, and we're just starting. I don't know what the future holds, but I know every night we pray, my wife and I, before we sleep, that our marriage will be founded upon Christ and Christ always there. So we are very happy. So far, the writing the journey is so beautiful, and I'm very happy. I want you to have that life. I don't want you to have the negative feeling. I don't want you to be in a place where you're bickering and wife storming out. And 
all kinds of you see the divorce rate of Mizoram is so high right I don't know some of you your parents your uncles your brother even in your home own home divorce may have hit even in my own home it hits so hard and it's and there are so many orphans and things like that we don't want that and this is the time for you to rebuild your life think about it carefully my dear brothers and sisters some of you may have gone way so deep and you may think uh, you may have thought well i can't uh, really swim out of it because uh, i have uh, i really been into this but there's a way out christ can save you cling on to him cry out to him for help and just uh, you just cut the sever the relationship that you have had right now and you will be all the more happier i can tell you I can vouch for that you'll be a whole lot more happier just because, as I said, all the world is doing doesn't mean you have to do that. All right. So that's what I wanted you to, to, to hello, brothers and sisters. So the Bible doesn't just directly may say, don't have boyfriend and girlfriend, but we pull out principles from that. And now to end my statement and to end our teachings, this teaching is all inconsistent with what we have been teaching at UESI. Only when you become graduates, when you can earn, then that's the time when you can be involved in relationship and start, yes, a family life, okay? Right. So what we have been teaching, what I've been saying, the content of whatever I say, it is not from my own. I have heard, I have listened to pastors, preachers, more spiritual than me who have lived this life. And from my own experience also, from what I saw, and I have been telling you, and I've been teaching you to do exactly like that. So that in the long run, may not be one or two years or three years, but in the long run, I can tell you, you'll be better off. In the long run, you'll be happy. In the long run, you can live a testimonial lifestyle in this relationship, right? And you should be able to help others also. If I had not been into this situation, see, I might not be even to, be worthy to even teach you also. Right. I'm not saying I'm worthy to teach you on this subject relationship, but what I'm saying is this. If you go this particular road, the way we teach you, I know it's a road of blessing. It may be hard, difficult. You may face mockery from your friends and the world will, you're not going to be popular. But this is a life of purity, a life of holiness, a life of sancti sanctification, glorious, victorious life. That lay awaits for you. Right. So relationship is very serious just because your friends are doing. Hollywood is doing, Mizo Society is doing, everyone's doing around, doesn't mean you have to get involved. Wait for the right time. There are three parameters that I gave you, all right? And look at who, those who do not follow this, their lives has always been. And I always see again, those who question what we have been teaching that i don't see their spiritual life is productive i don't see there's testimony i see always complaining i don't see a fruitful christian life they're a pathetic condition those who defy these teachings okay but those who follow it they live a happy life more abundant life well, thank you for your patience. And I got 10 minutes. And if you have any questions or queries, uh, I think we can take it, right? Hey, brother, I have one question. Yeah, sure, brother. Go ahead. Uh, you have said that if we fall in a relationship, uh, that relationship will lead us away from God, right? Because if we fall, uh, fall in love with the wrong person, that could lead us, lead us away from God. But imagine this, if we fall, fell in love with one of our EU members or one who is in, who have God, a child of God herself, then that could also boost, boost our relationship with Christ, right? And is that a bad thing? Yeah, thank you very much, brother. Yes, that's very true. Um, as we always say, this is infatuation at, at your age. It's not a true love, really. And God can use all kinds of instruments, even the living, non-living, even atheists or non-believers also use this as an instrument. All right. And but people often want to say, well, I have a girlfriend and that's really gives me, you know, encourages me and all that sort. Yeah, we understand that. 
but we are saying that at this time at this stage see you guys are very beautiful you may have a secretly you know admired some girls and all that i understand that all these things happening i understand all that but you don't let that emotion get the better of you wait upon god at the right time and i don't think seriously just because that lady is giving you some nice counseling and you all that this is seriously not because the entire thing is it is not good it is unhealthy at this stage to fall in love with a uh, to get engaged or uh, not engaged perhaps uh, to be uh, in love with a, a lady because you don't know what happens right behind the sms the text and all that there is always the negative thoughts right and the temptation is so strong and i can tell you that no woman or men are strong enough when you are alone right this is so dangerous so i don't feel i don't see that you may feel that oh she's given me a whole lot of courage and strength like that but you have started depending upon her you don't depend upon god right and so that encourages uh, sexual immorality in your thoughts in your speech in your text and within no time you will fall into sin whether you truly committed that sin sexual sin physically or even you harbor those negative things and that is very dangerous right and so you cannot have relationship because the entire thing first of all to be in relationship at this stage when you are eu this is unhealthy it's dangerous and it is obstructing the ministry of god for others when others look at us look at us the ministry also that's why in eu we are always very strict we always say all the obs should not be engaged in any form of relationship see we have had some instances in the past where president and the treasurer they are into relationship and their staff workers they have to disband the whole eu there and other people uh, other college authorities also do not allow for the eu to continue to thrive so it is dangerous so you may think uh i am getting spiritual benefit from this lady but ultimately the point will come when it's no longer a spiritual benefit it's for lust only thank you so much brother you gotta think about that the devil is so sly it will make you it will make us into believing that relationship is okay because as i said we've been doing this for so many many years and we are so liberal in our christianity that these kinds of preaching as i said is not popular anymore <laughs> whatever i say right now i say to my local tkp they will say oh no brother mark that is ultra conservative you can't say that i go to any ktp and say these things and they will kick me out you don't come and preach no more here that's what they do thank you brother josh thank you so much Yes. Anything you, more? Brother. Uh, yes, brother. I have one question. Uh, brother. Not that I have a girlfriend right now. Like, <clears throat> my question is, what if we have a girlfriend right now or boyfriend? Like, not that I have a girlfriend. What if, you know, what's your op opinion on that? Do we broke up with them or uh, what you, can you give me your opinion on that? Yeah, I've had an experience there. So I will tell you what I do. First, two experience. First, I got into a bad relationship by a bad company. Somebody, I was a good friend of his, and we were together. We love music. You see, many years ago, I played in a band, and we always sing, and we love music and guitars and things like that. So, but he got into drink, and he gave me drink and all that, and we got so drunk. And then finally, my parents got the news, and they were so sad. My dad threatened to uh, kick me out of the house. And I thought about it and I said, oh, no, I can't be with this man anymore. So I called a friend of mine who were there in the grass, very nice. In the evening, the sun was sitting down. I said, let's sit down, my friend. And he's a great friend. I said, 
So we can't be friends anymore because you were drinking and uh, you got me into the habit of drinking and my parents came to know these news. And so you're, they don't lie, welcome you. I'm very sorry. I love you as a friend, but I want us to discontinue our friendship. He it, it took it so hard, really. That's one of the worst things that I, one of the worst situations I've ever been in. But I got to do what I got to do, right? Many years ago, not many years ago, I think, yeah, maybe many, I met one girl and we we're great and all that one. But when I think about these things, it was so dangerously close for me. And it, she drove me really crazy and that, you know, the uh, that uh, emotions and all that. I began to fall in love and I realized this is not good. I know she's not going to be my wife, but she's taken whole lot of my time and now my thoughts are negative and things like that and so I told her see this is the way I feel about you you're a great girl you're go you're a churchy girl and everything but I don't feel that you're gonna be my wife so let's discontinue oh how bitterly she cried <laughs> uh, you may think uh, I don't have I'm a very heartless but I can tell you that's for the betterment of both of us. And I told you, see, what I'm telling is for the betterment. I don't want to hurt you. You don't want to hurt me. Wait, I don't want to leave a trail of blood and devastation along the way. This is, when I think about it, this is not going to be there. So let's not waste time on each other. Because I feared God. Otherwise, you were together. We're going to sin. And I don't want that. That's how I did, my dear brother, brothers and sisters. If you are in a relationship right now, you're friends, and you know that's not what God had in for them. You got to have the guts to kill that relationship, terminate that, speak out like a man, tell them, see, I'm a child of God, you're a child of God, but what we're doing is wrong. Let's wait. Maybe, chances are that maybe we come back together. We don't know the providence of God, but let's discontinue relationship. If the Lord wills it, he will bring us back. Let's not hurt each other and let's clean up our lives. Let's not become enemies. We'll be friends, but let's not engage in that. If it's destined, pre, if God predestined that we are together, ultimately he will bring us back. Let's trust upon him. But right now is not a time for us to, to waste our time on this very dangerous thing. That's how we got to speak to them, brother, okay? And I know God can give you the courage. It's hard. Brother, I yes. One question. I really, I felt very guilty to ask, but I really wish to know, um, uh, do you love your wife before you get married? How do you know she is the one? Yeah. I love my wife, uh, yes, before I got married too. And uh, see... Uh, so, as I said, I've been praying for many years and, you know, many, many people think, oh, Brother Mark is going to not get married at all, all, all that. Even Roman Catholic father called me, see, very funny. He said, yeah, why are you still single? Then I said this, yeah, I, I'm this and that and this. Oh, you better come and join our church. You become a priest, a father or brother. How is that? Is that a good prospect? He even invited me. <laughs> all right. That's so funny. And then, yeah. I prayed and yes, she came into our ministry. We first saw that it was, uh, uh, I heard about her and I saw her. She's very attractive in the sense that her character, her nature is shown through. And it's not a love at first sight, I can tell you. It's not a love at first sight, okay? And then finally we got to know and something's happening and, uh, and then it's happening in the sense that we, kind of come together very all came together very often and met on occasions bible study and things like that and we kind of got along so well and uh oh well i thought oh what a fine old lady she is i didn't i didn't think that i mean she would ever fall in love with me or anything but uh, i know i've been praying and then finally there comes a point in time when yeah hmm, things work and then i fall in love with her and I said, oh, if this is what the Lord gave me, then it's going to be really wonderful because this is more than what I bargained for. 
So in his own time, the Lord uh, really gave me some kind of understanding, revelation. All right, it's it's not a whoosh, kind of one-off event. Behold, that's a wife. Not not that thing. All right, but it it happened slowly you know, over the course of two or three years. And uh, I, the more I have, she's with me. The more I begin to love her, I see her flaws or imperfections, and I'll see more of that. But that makes me love her more. Because as I said, we wanted to ground our marriage in Christ alone, and not on any other thing. I don't know whether I answer that your question or not, but I do love her. And I realize that I love her. It's not an arranged marriage. <laughs> it's not an arranged. Yeah, I, I, I say it's an arranged marriage, right? Brother Zawa, arranged marriage from God. Yeah, it's an arranged marriage from God. Yeah, I think that's the way we got to put it. It's an arranged marriage from God. Yeah. Any more? There are just one thing. Uh, sure, brother. You can uh, answer it in uh, very short uh, words. Mm. Also. How long were you together before you get married? I got to know, I think we got to know each other for about three years, I think. Three years, I think. Yeah. Yeah, approximately three years. Now, I, I, I don't want to recommend three years or five years or ten years because, you know, it's my personal thing. Because my my job was not regularized. I, I had a commitment myself to, to honor. Earlier, I made a commitment that once I get regularized only that I'll marry. All right. So she's got to wait for me that. So this is my own personal kind of a, you know commitment that I made. If I had been uh, like, uh, let's say, regularized in my job earlier, it could have happened earlier or something like that. I don't know. It all depends upon that. So I just want to make sure. But don't say Brother Mark recommended three years of courtship, okay? It's not my recommendation. It's just that I have some prior commitment that I made to myself, to my mother and my father also. I'll get married only when my job is regularized and I'm waiting for that. Brother Zawa might have something to say also. <laughs> Yes, I think we are way over, uh, I think, over our time. Brother Zawa? Hello, brother. Yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it's very, brother. Yeah, I think uh, at the, our time's almost spent also. I am happy, yeah, as I listened to, uh, second half of your speech, and um, I think all are blessed and interested in this topic. Yeah, I think that got to uh, make the best plan, the best partner, for every one of us in his right time. Yeah, we did need that also. We, we may touch a bit in the sermon devotion. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you so much, Brother Zawa, for the closing comment. Let's give our hand of our time back to camp officials. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Brother Mark, for the fruitful season and for sparing your precious time for us. And I hope that uh, God will bless you and your wife with uh, good health and with the lovely kids at the right time. Okay. And it seems that we all are clear enough. And now I'll call Brother Isaac uh, to close. Mm -hmm close the practical session talk with a prayer and after that our camp director or assistant director may take that time okay yes thank you let us bow down our heads in prayer gracious our heavenly father lord we thank you so much for giving us this wonderful opportunity to come together through this zoom platform and to continue our second day of our discipleship training camp once again and lord thank you so much for giving uh, brother mark in our midst as he took a session with us with a very relevant and important topic about relationship thank you so much for uh, all the testimonies and all his commitments that he shared that was so encouraging and Help each and every one of us to remember all the things that we have learned. And please continue to speak in our heart through the Holy Spirit so that, Lord, we may be able to uh, uh, 
apply all the things that we've learned in the right time in the right time as well as we're going to engage in different activities once again we invite the holy spirit to be our guide and to be our teacher throughout our uh, activities or throughout our camps committing the rest of our time ourselves once again into a loving hand in jesus name i pray with thanksgiving amen <clears throat>